Gina. Doctor. Steady flight. It's out of petrol. It was spluttering. No, no, no. I'm sure it's engine failure. Let's use the car. No, absolutely not. You can't move him. Colonel Knowles, go and fetch some petrol. Get another ambulance. And clear off. Look, I'm quite happy with pen and paper. I do not want. Oh, Jina Sahab. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Maaf ki jaga. I thought uh, you were one of these wretched computer wallers. They keep sending these damn machines in from the future. Excuse me. Yes? No, 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 no. No appeal. Tell him to go to hell. You do know where you are. I have a vague idea. You've stopped here, so we may decide where to send you. With all due respect, sir, May I know how you arrive at these decisions? Ah. Here. We have everything here. We've been expecting you. Oh. Oh, no. They have transferred every detail of your life into these wretched computers. No one here knows how to use them. And the manuals are written in God knows what language. Your file's gone. As it is, we're overworked. We've had lots of trouble with your century. World wars, revolutions, communism, capitalism, fascism, thisism and thatism. Lenin, Stalin, Hitler, Mao Zedong, Mr. Harry Truman and his nuclear bomb. Yes, we've had a very busy time here. And where did you send them? I can't even remember. The problem you fellows pose is desperate. 
You create Pakistan, and millions die in the division of what was one country into two pieces. There was no other way, none. Maybe, maybe. Please follow me, Mr. Jinnah. I did everything I could to stop the slaughter. I fought for Pakistan so that a hundred million people could live in safety and dignity. I've got an hour and a half to prepare your case. What are the charges? They accuse you of being ambitious, arrogant, humorless, stubborn, a man without charm, a bully. They say you used people. I had no ambition, except for the safety of the Muslims of India. I had no stubbornness or arrogance, except that which was required of me to face my enemies. And I died a million deaths myself for all those who suffered through partition. Look, Jin, sir, just the facts. Facts? What facts? You've lost the books. You can't understand the machines. I see what you mean. Well, there's of course the eternal shortcut. At Harrow, we got into the habit of calling everyone sir. I called my father sir. I called my mother sir, everyone. It's a great British tradition. When in doubt, call them sir. I suggest it to Dickie. He only calls you Panditchi to annoy Jinnah. It's difficult, isn't it? And what do we call Gandhi? Mahatma, Bapu, Gandhiji, Mr. Gandhi. <laughs> he has more names than a character in a Russian novel. Perhaps it's best to behave like a good Indian wife. They don't call their husbands anything. Just nudge them. And what do you think of Western civilization, Mr. Nehru? Oh, I think it would be an excellent idea. <laughs> That's private. You're not happy, are you, Jawahar? You want the British, us, to go, but you don't want the bond to be broken. What the British have left us will last a long time. And people like you. I'm proud of it. Did Mr. Jinnah go to Oxford or Cambridge? No, he didn't. But he was called to the bar in London. And I'm told he even did a stint as Romeo on a London stage. <laughs> it was not the lark, but the nightingale. Who <laughs> forgot the rest? Oh, Joe, you're lying. He never played Shakespeare. No, it's true. It's funny, he seemed so proper when we first met him in Delhi. His propriety doesn't bother us. His stubbornness, vain gloriousness. Wait till the discussions begin. Dickie's in for a surprise. I know he thinks he's the great persuader. Jinnah is the great unpersuadable. The great unpersuadable. Divide the country in two. Muslims on one side, Hindus on the other. Mr. Jinnah, that is madness. Lord Mountbatten, it would be equally insane to leave a Muslim minority at the mercy of a Hindu majority, many of whom hate us. Now, if the English Parliament... The Prime Minister has given me full powers. I decide. That's why I'm here, as representative of the King Emperor. Whom we respect. I am here as a representative of a Muslim nation whom you must learn to respect. Mr. 
What did Lord Mountbatten think of the Pakistan demand? I suggest you ask him. I do not speak for the King Emperor. Jala Sahab, we were told that you are humorless. Oh, really? It's that fellow again. He's a member of the Congress Party. Because I don't laugh at his jokes, he goes around spreading this rumor. <laughs> you call yourself Muslim? And you parade your respected sister in front of crowds shamelessly? Islam stands for equality for men and women, Maulana Saab. And the women in the family of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, were active in public life. Oh, no. They followed me here, bloody fool. Your ladyship, Mr. Neri, sir, His Excellency has asked Horrid. me to... I said I didn't need... His Excellency's orders, my lady. So, Dickie knows where you are. No, Jawahar. Dickie knows where we are. Goodbye, Mr. Nehru. Lady Mountbatten. How many were hurt? Eight people badly burned. We had a feast prepared for Eid, Mim Sahib. The Hindus rushed in with stones and sticks, shouting, Kill the cow murderers! The residents of this basti will move out of this area! My orders are from local magistrate. These people need your protection. And who are you? They have sent Hindu policemen. These are illegal squatters. We have lived here 20 years. And crouched on the land? You politician, better get out. Sir, do you know who? It doesn't matter who I am. These people are not moving until you escort them to a proper relief camp. Arrest these people. My apologies again, Miss Jinnah. I assure you, we have evacuated the whole neighborhood to temporary accommodation in army barracks. Yes, thank you. My apologies again. Arresting Miss Jinnah? You damn fool. Punjab and the Bihar Muslim League is reporting countless incidents of arson and murder against Muslim communities. And the police here just turned their backs. All over the country, Hindu officers have taken charge of the police forces. <coughs> Are you all right? Yes, I think the fever's going. That poor girl, she gave up her life for you. Fatima, my little sister. She was everything to me. She should have been married and found happiness with a husband and children in some decent family. She was my companion, my friend, and my guide. And she believed in Pakistan. Were you ever jealous of Nehruji? His good looks, his wit, his charm, his English manners? He was my political opponent. I respected him, though I never really trusted him. And Gandhiji? Another worthy opponent. But he would never lie. Though as a politician, he would not always tell the truth. Mr. Jenna in some 
Bonsoir. It is always a pleasure to meet Mr. Gina. Mr. Gandhi, Mr. Gandhi, are we near the end? I would prefer to say close to a new beginning, my son. I feel like the mother in the judgment of Solomon. Give the child to the other woman, but don't cut it in two. Together we must make one last effort to keep this great nation as one, Muslims and Hindus in one free country. Gandhiji, I'm willing to try. Years ago, Viceroy, Mr. Jinnah was the greatest advocate of Hindu-Muslim unity. Was he indeed? Well, then what changed him? Blind ambition. No, no. The feeling that Muslims would have no voice, perhaps. Ganesh, if you were in my position, what would you say to Jinnah? I would say, Mr. Jinnah, India must stay united. You be its first Prime Minister and choose your cabinet. And tell him that Congress agrees. They suggested it. B Babu, what are you saying? Our party would never agree. Jabalal, you mean you would never agree for the unity of India? Oh, yes, but <laughs> making Jinnah from a minority Muslim party Prime Minister? We would ensure, of course, that you would be Deputy Prime Minister. But our party. But if Gandhiji and you and Sada Patel declare in favor, who is to say no? Except, of course, Jinnah. You think he'll agree? Why would he not? All right, Bapuji. What would he say if I told him that Gandhi had made the offer? <laughs> he would say, wily old Gandhi. <laughs> Dinner. Lady Mountbatten. Tomorrow. You can't offer it to Jinnah. The country won't accept it. We've never even put him in jail. I could start now. Nero's been in for years defying the British. Jinnah, my dear, does it more subtly. I have no idea Gandhiji was so cynical. It'll never work. What you mean is, what will our Jawaharlal do? He has to be Prime Minister, doesn't he? Yes. I know. He's the great rising star in our firmament, a man of destiny. But will it make sense to give it to Jenna? Gandhiji didn't mean it. Oh, yes, he does. And it's a great plan. Give Jinnah the biggest responsibility in an undivided nation. What can he do? He has to appoint a majority congress to a cabinet. I've seen it before. Make the biggest bound of the head prefect. The country will never forgive you. You mean you will never forgive you? Or you. And you couldn't live with that. Dickie, it isn't only me. You're in love with power. And Jawahar is the embodiment of it. So, what will you do? I don't know. But I'm tempted. If these Indian politicians carry on like this, I'll foist dinner on them. It's what they deserve. So spoilt barracrum lawyer. Gurdip Singh. Not very dignified. Of course, I was in love with India. I saved it from the Japs. Edwina will tell you we long to come back. You can imagine how I felt. The king called me and said, go to India. 
Give it all away. Can you give away what never really belonged to you? You're right. We don't own it. We hold it in trust. My predecessor, Wavell, told me a funny story. When he first landed in India, the crowds greeted him with, Pakistan, Zindabad, Pakistan, Zindabad. He knew even less Urdu than I do. So he turned his aide, he said, what are they saying? Well, about quick as a flash, the aide translates. Oh, they're saying, Pakistan's in the bag. You see, Zindabad, in the bag. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> with all the tension in the country, I don't think we have a great deal to laugh about. Perhaps not. These are by any measure difficult times with difficult decisions ahead. May I take this informal occasion to make a very serious proposal? Dickie, should the ladies withdraw? No. Stay. Suppose, Mr. Jenner, I were to say to you, let's have a united India with a democratic constitution and the first Prime Minister of India, completely free to choose his own cabinet, would be Muhammad Ali Jinnah. What would you say? The Hindus, the Congress party would never agree. Suppose I tell you they have. It was in fact Gandhi's idea. <laughs> Wily old Gandhi. Well? Yeah, Viceroy, it's a clever ruse. Give a dog a bone. No, no. Let us say that Mr. Jinnah is the best man for the job and the best choice available. Do you expect me to be flattered? Perhaps even to accept? The brutal truth, Lord Mountbatten, is that the Hindus have three votes to our one. You think they will accept that? Democracy. One man, one vote, without any safeguards, will turn the Muslims into frightened, insecure, second-class citizens. But our religion, our culture, our language, our very lives under threat. We can discuss building in some safeguards, assurances. What assurances, Lord Mountbatten? Why do you want to force reluctant partners into a marriage? Our customs, our food, we can't even drink out of the same glass. You don't yet understand why we want to create Pakistan. Both communities have suffered, Mr. Jinnah. Yes, they have. And they must be separated. Why didn't you accept it? Folly of the highest degree. You could have saved millions of lives, millions of homes. There would have been none of this misery. You think I took this decision lightly? Here I was being offered the prime ministership of the largest new free nation on earth, and I turned it down because it wouldn't work. You should have stayed in Simla and in bed. You can't play fast and loose with bronchitis. Not even if a country is at stake. There will be no country without you, Jinnasan. It's not bronchitis. No. It's consumption, isn't it? Yes. Leading to deterioration and death. Yes. Doctor, we must keep this between ourselves. Think of the potential consequences. I've never lied to him before, Doctor. And now I have to pretend that I don't know. You must get him to rest. Come on. 
Were you jealous of Rati? No. Of course I wasn't jealous of her. That pretty creature. So stunningly pretty and young. Young enough to be your daughter. But she didn't look after you, did she? She wasn't interested in the same things. And she could never look down the long road of your destiny. As I can. I'll race you back. You will lose again. A great setting for the beginning of love. Yes, it was. And then love faded away? Mine never did. Hmm, I can see that you'd run away from the gates of heaven to catch a last glimpse of her. He ain't neither Hindu nor Muslim. We Parsis can only benefit if the two main communities stop fighting. I agree, sir. And share their culture and their Indianness. Jinnah, dear boy, you are young and idealistic. The only solution is the closest contact, interracial marriage. Then the children will be neither Hindu nor Muslim, and these differences will fall away. So, Hindu-Muslim intermarriage would be beneficial? Most certainly. And what, sir, do you think of intermarriage between a Parsi girl and a Muslim man? if their status were compatible. Mr. Jinnah, how dare you, sir? You have abused my hospitality. I will remind you that my daughter is 16, a mere child. Sir, I deny any such intention. And I apologize for any offense I may have caused and will immediately relieve you of the feeling that your generous hospitality has been abused. You may retire. I shall see you in the library after dinner. And you will never see that man again! A Muslim, 24 years old, medically fit. Smear it to me. We'll take him anyway, maybe about five. Um. Mr. President. Good morning, sir. I trust you are well. We have come to join the British Army. Mr. Jinnah, I warn you that any interruption here of recruitment will be seen as a riotous disturbance. No need for your threats, sir. As Indians, we simply demand that we be recruited to the King's service as fully commissioned officers. This form of exhibition will get you nowhere. If Indians are being asked to shed their blood for the Empire, then why can't we be given the dignity of joining the army at all levels? Or are we just cannon fodder? I declare the proceedings for today to be over. Your reply, sir!
repeat the kalma after me la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah there is no god but allah and muhammad is his prophet Our beloved daughter Ratan Bai, we welcome you to the face of Islam. Now, daughter, do you accept this man, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, to be your lawful husband in the sight of God? I accept. I accept. I accept. Mr. and Mrs. Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Delighted, Mr. Jinnah, delighted. Mrs. Jinnah. And Mrs. Jinnah. I must confess, your reputation as Bombay's beauty is not exaggerated. Yes, indeed. You and Mr. Jinnah deserve to delight you. <laughs> Thank you. I'd rather be known as the strongest nationalist in Bombay. I thought we'd put politics behind us this evening, Mrs. Jinnah. We are so pleased you were able to join us. You live above us, don't you, Mr. Jinnah? Atop the hill? Yes, with a view of the Arabian Sea. The same vast expanse we see from our Karachi house. Oh, how lucky. We've never been to Karachi. And the weather there? Changeable? I was saying to Mrs. Jinnah, the weather in Bombay is quite changeable. Would you bring Mrs. Jinnah a shawl? We never think of heating the house. You must be feeling quite chilly, my dear. When Mrs. Jinnah feels the cold, she will ask for a wrap herself. Spare yourself the trouble. I won't stand in their way. Let them go. How dare she dress like that at my table? I don't believe Mr. Jinnah will go very far with that attitude. We must make two pledges. The first. The first is that we stand united, Hindus and Muslims, for an India free from imperial British rule. The second is that we must act in a constitutional way. We place our just... We place our just demands. Because only in this way, by treading the path of dignity, and we take our place as free India among the civilized and great nations. Ladies and gentlemen, I move the motion. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. happy to be with you today. I am even happier to see that you have as your chief spokesman of Hindu-Muslim unity the distinguished Mr. Jinnah from the minority community. I wish to lend my support to everything Mr. Jinnah says. He said we must act in a constitutional way. He means we must play by the rules. We can only play by the rules if we are included in the game.
I welcome the fact that Mr. Jinnah speaks of dignity. India has an ancient, unshakable dignity and an ancient spirit, a force of spiritual strength which has been suppressed for too long. But when it is released, this shining light of truth of ahimsa, which is non-violence, and satyagraha, which is the ancient path of truth, no force on earth, no constitutional game will be able to suppress it. Mr. Gandhi it was very patronizing. As though you were the newcomer, and he'd worked to build the Congress party instead of the other way round. Oh, I don't care about that. There is something about what Mr. Gandhi says. It makes me a little uneasy. My other brothers need me in Karachi, but I'll be back soon. I hope you haven't forgotten anything. I don't trust these servants. Oh, don't be silly. Ram has been looking after me ever since I was a little girl. Ram, please look after her. She's so young. Don't worry, Bibi Saiba. Don't worry. But uh, when you will return from Karachi, as soon as I'm needed, Ram. Where are you going, Jin? Just for a stroll, my love. Do you want me to come? Good young man. I hope you don't mind me resting for a few moments in your lovely garden. No, no. No, of course not, sir. Can I ask them to fetch some water? No, 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 I'm not unwell. It's just that the climb up the hill is a little tiring. You're most welcome. Thank you. Mr. Dinner, you are right to trust logic. But isn't there some logic in Gandhi's non-violence. What do you mean? Who are you? Just a traveler. Gandhi angers you because he patronizes you. No, no. No, I'm not a child. Mr. Gandhi is an extraordinary man, a man who believes in his own mission, but the clothes this imitation of the Hindu peasants, the, the spinning wheels, the fasts, the bits and pieces of Sanskrit philosophy. Ahimsa, Satyagraha, he is calling forth a flood. Isn't that what the movement needs? Millions of people demanding that the British leave India. Yes. Would it stop there? What else will they demand? When you talk of spirit, you release darker forces. Powers that can't be questioned, illogical urges and anger. If they succeed in kicking out the British because they have usurped power in India, won't their attention then turn to the Muslims? After all, we Muslims conquered India long before the British. Isn't that logical too? No. Because we are not outsiders. We are part of this country. 
And besides, we have no England to go back to. Yourself, Jim. I'm just rehearsing a speech. Perhaps I should ask for a postponement of the trial. Jin, I don't want you to take this amiss, but I'd like to discuss something personal with you. Kanji, I have three cases pending in the High Court. Can't it wait? Magistrate's order. My advice, Mr. Jenner, is to go back. Stop this slaughter. No! Pull the men back. <laughs> With John Larty Charge! In this great battle for our freedom, let it not be said of us that we are guilty of shedding blood, but let it be said that we suffered, that we shed not somebody's blood, but our own. So, I put this resolution to Congress. We pledge ourselves to secure complete independence for India through means of non-violence. Members of Congress, I beg to oppose this hasty resolution no one's desire for independence is greater than mine. Yet I wish to point out that these methods, this dragging in of religious symbols, these radical marches and provocation are now beginning to split the movement. The method and goal proposed by Mr. Gandhi's res... No! No! Mahatma Gandhi! Say Mahatma Gandhi! Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi! Mahatma Gandhi! Mahatma Gandhi! In 
Mr. Gandhi's resolution. At this moment, the destiny of our country is in the hands of two men, and one of them is Gandhi. Therefore, standing on this platform, I appeal to him to pause, to cry halt. Before it is too late. Mr. Jinnah is right. Do not bring religion into politics. We are all Indians. If we go down this road, we will turn Hindu against Muslim in the end. We will not win our freedom together. We will turn brother against brother. The turning point? I left the Congress party. If Congress was going to turn into a Hindu party, then somebody had to speak up for the Muslims. Why are you dressed like that? Jean, you are so late. We're late. The party started at 8 o'clock. The party? Mm. The party at Lady Gigi Boy's. Oh. You said you'd take me. Of course. That party. Well, I have to start for Delhi on the 10 o'clock train. You go by yourself. Again. Bertie, I have a practice to run. I don't want to go dancing with the baronet. with mommy? It's all right, darling. Come and sit down. I'm not cross with mommy. Did mommy give you a kiss goodnight? No, silly. Mommy never puts me to bed. Anita puts me to bed. Anita, take her back to her room. I have to go, sweetheart. You're always going away. No, I'm sorry. Go to bed. That's a good girl. Ready to go? Kanji, I, I found these. Where is she? She's asleep. I called. Kanji, you knew about this. Why didn't you tell me? She didn't want you to know. She has cancer. It's eating up her insides. That's why they prescribed the morphine.
What is in your heart? I can't. It's too private. Go on, dear. We can't keep the spirit waiting. Ruti. What are they doing? Will my Jinnah get married again? When I die? No, Ruti, no, never. The pretty dear wants to know if her husband still loves her, like he used to. Kanji, please do something before Mr. Jenna comes back. The glass was right. I did not love her as before. I loved her and I needed her much more. I never taught myself to show that love. If we win here in Delhi, the government will be forced to publish casualty figures for Indians killed in battle. I shall demand that the compensation paid for Indian widows is the same as they pay for Tommies. Sir, long distance call from Bombay. Thank you. Muhammad Ali Jinnah speaking. Yes. I see. I'll be on the next train. My, uh, my wife is very ill. You'll have to carry the case. You still cry for her? No, not for her. Then why? For love that is irretrievable. So much love. And it all melts away.
Mr. Birdwhistle has been accused of subversive publications. By subversive, they mean in favor of Indian independence. He has also been forcibly removed from India. My Lord. Either Mr. Birtwistle is a citizen of Britain and subject of the King Emperor, or he is not. And either India is part of the British Empire, or it is not. And the King Emperor is its King and Emperor, or he is not. And I would remind the court that it is treason to pronounce that he is not. Mr. Birtwistle, are you a citizen of Britain and subject of the King Emperor? Indeed, I am. And were you so one month ago? Yes, I was. And were you instructed to leave India? Yes. By whom? By the office of the Secretary of State for India. My lord. No resident of Bournemouth, shall we say, may be told that he is to repair to Scotland and Scotland alone, since Magna Carta, the right to free movement throughout the realm, has been established. So it has. My client has been denied that right in that part of this realm known as India. Tell me, Mr. Jinnah, in another place I have heard you argue that India is not part of this empire. That is as it may be, my lord. However, I am not in that place now, and I'm conscious of my humble role of advocacy in this your court. Mr. Bertwistle. You are a fortunate man. Jinnah Sahib, the Muslims of India need your leadership. Iqbal Sahib, I am flattered by the compliment from you, our great poet and philosopher. There are many who can provide that leadership. No, Jinnah. We need a Muslim of the modern age. Such a man has to lead the struggle for Pakistan and then be an inspiration to a country at its birth. How can I even dare think of myself as such a man? There is no other. For 200 years, the Muslims of India have lost the directions of their destiny. And now, as the mists clear, a vision is born of a country of purity and compassion. A Pakistan. Iqbal, please. Dina Sahib, it's my turn to say please. I know I haven't long to live. Go back to India and take charge of the League, please. Go back to India and carve out a country. How? Where to start? Why didn't you write or wire? I know. I'm sorry to intrude. Serious problem? Just polishing his teeth. Hmm. Sir, I beg your indulgence. Would you mind coming back tomorrow? We have urgent business. What are you saying? I have paid. Please. See, there's one thing that's been bothering me. I've uh, spoken to Aunt Masiji. Uh, how to say this? Oh, you're the lawyer. I wanted to contact decent families with boys. But you understand. Men of about your age. Suitable men. As head of the family, I... <laughs> you're going to matchmake for me? That's so sweet. For your happiness. 
I resolved to give that up long ago. The marriage, love, children. I want to be there when we win. But you forgive me. I know you think I'm very modern. You're as old-fashioned as they come. <laughs> within our grasp. The Muslim League has proved in the eyes of the world our right to represent the Muslims of India, a nation which has found its identity and has today declared its will. Sahab, men must also be judged by the love they have shown. Apart from Rati, who would you say you love the most? My sister, Fatima. My daughter, Dina. And you think you treated them as well as you could? Good morning, my dear. Papa, I must speak to you. Of course. Sit down. Papa, I want your permission to marry. Marry? But, but you are far too young. Who? Never. Mr. Wadia? But he's a Parsi. Yes. Dina, there are millions of young Muslim boys in India. You can't do this to me. There were millions of Muslim girls. And you married Mama. She was a Parsi. She became a Muslim. Is Mr. Wadia prepared to embrace our faith? No. But I will marry him. Dina, if you do this, you cannot call yourself my daughter anymore. I forbid it. But... but why? Because it is against our customs, against our tradition. I have fought for a Muslim state, and my daughter marries outside the faith. I am very proud that the girls from our community have qualified in law, in the sciences, in English and Urdu, Sanskrit, and even in Chinese. Excellent.
The graduates from the Muslim college will no doubt go on to enrich the lives of both Pakistan and India. Lady Mountbatten. It gives me great pleasure to give the Ratanbai Modi Award for Distinction in History to Farida Shah. Miss Jenna, why have you invited an English woman to be our guest when they have only contempt for us? Why should we have to shake the hand of the enemy? If you object to my presence, I, I will willingly. No, Lady Mountbatten. My younger sister, this is not the way we Muslims have chosen to fight for our independence. The British are our friends and our rulers. We don't want them to be our rulers, but we want them to remain our friends. Now, sister, come and take your prize. Pandit Ji, it is dangerous. There are demonstrations against our party by Pathan tribesmen. And sir, I'll speak to them, don't worry. Muslim League members. Stop the car, I want to talk to them. I said stop! My friends, my friends and comrades, my fellow citizens of India, throughout my tour of the northwest frontier, I have been dismayed and saddened by the demonstrations of violence and opposition directed against the Congress Party in this great province. Congress, Congress is a party with no religious boundaries. It is for Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs, Christians, without distinction of caste or creed. I'm so sorry. Why on earth are you giving speeches in the front here? I thought it would have specifically told you not to go. Dickie, I thank you for your concern, my friend. Does Edwina know about the incident? Of course. Nothing stays secret in India. Well, let me tell you both that I will never accept that we in Congress can't represent the Muslims. One stone won't stop me. My dear Joao, this is not one stone. It's an avalanche. This election is disastrous for your Congress party. The Muslim League has won the Punjab. It's won Bengal. It's won the frontier. What did you expect? They have a majority in those provinces. Yes, who've given their votes to Mr. Jinnah. And now he'll demand that with these provinces, he has the basis for Pakistan. He can break away. Dickie, this is dangerous nonsense. Those provinces have minorities of Sikhs and Hindus, millions of them. So? They will never be safe in Pakistan. That, my dear Jawahar, is precisely what Mr. Jinnah says about the Muslims in India under your party's rule. Yes, I know, I know, but, but don't you see, there are Hindu fanatics in our own party. And with all this talk of a Muslim Pakistan, they are beginning to demand a Hindu India. If they split the Congress, the Muslim League will be the strongest party in India. Unless I give Jinnah his Pakistan and split the country first. My friends, this is a historic day. The Viceroy, Lord Mountbatten, has conveyed to me the decision of the British government to concede to us the creation of the state of Pakistan. A partition commission is being set up under Sir Cyril Radcliffe with three Muslim judges and three Hindus to mark out the borders of Pakistan.
Germany's emperor. I am a soldier in the service of the birthright of Pakistan. Why do you want to kill me? You're a traitor, Jinnah! If there is to be a Pakistan, it must be a Muslim state! Pakistan will be a Muslim state. Yes, but with you as leader, you speak of the rights of Christians, of Hindus, you talk of the rights of women! You are an ignorant fool. I have fought for your mother, your sister, and your children's children to live in dignity. Islam doesn't need fanatics like you. Islam needs men of vision who will build the country. Now grow up and serve Pakistan. Thank you, Nadine. Now, that's one thing Indians are not good at. I only meant baking cakes. I must teach the cook. Lady Wave will absolutely spoil him. Joa, we're moving ahead. It's within shooting distance, Independence. Dickie should insist on Gandhiji's proposal and offer him again the prime ministership of the United India. Don't start wavering now. You must be Prime Minister of India, and giving away Pakistan is the only way. What are you two discussing? The impossibility of Indians baking proper English cakes. Cake is the right ingredient. That's not what's depressing, Jawaha. Come on, old boy. Jinnah can have his truncated little country. He'll come limping back to you in a matter of months. Jinnah will beg for reunification. And then it'll be up to you, Jawaha, to be magnanimous. I'll see to it. Then you still don't know him. He'll beg for nothing. My dear Jawaha, the anniversary of my victory in Burma falls in August. Wouldn't it be a great triumph if it coincided with the date of the independence of India and Pakistan? You mean delay the transfer of power by four months? No. I mean bring it forward by eight months. India will gain her independence on the 15th of August, 1947. Pakistan would have to scramble to get itself ready. Mountbatten changed the date to force Pakistan into failure. He would not permit us to have our own army. But when the Muslims threatened to mutiny, he backed down. Ah. So you are not uh, beyond manipulating a little bit of blackmail? I wouldn't put it like that. Let us just say persuasion.
say to Dickie? I'll say I was with you, talking. He wants us to be close. I feel that too, but, but why? Well, if there's one person in the world who can explain something so difficult, he stands before me. Really? The mind of an Anglo-German aristocrat? Even that. Well, there's the deep answer and the shallow answer. Oh, give me the shallow one first. Then you won't mind if it's indelicate. Guide's honor. After being married for 20 or more years, Dickie doesn't want you anymore in that compelling way. And the deep reason? It's because he understands that friendship is rare and that we have found it. And he wants to be a part of it. He wants it to be the three of us. And he's willing to... <laughs> this is difficult. It's not a sharing. No, no, you're right. He has the deepest admiration for you. You, you see... You have more than he ever had. Oh, he has power, but you have the love of millions, and he wants to feel that there's something very strong, something very deep between you and him, too. And he can never bring himself to say it. I know. He's an Englishman. And the only way he knows is to lend me to you. Too well, perhaps. Jawahar, can I ask you one small thing? Anything, my dear. I know it's the one thing he wants, but he's too proud to ask. Aren't Dickie proud? <laughs> we know he's Viceroy because he's the best man on earth for the job, but for him, the doubt still remains that he's the King's cousin, and that's why he got the job. But if Congress were to invite him... Were to invite him to become India's Governor-General? I think it would be a great honor for us. And it would please Bapu, I know. But, Edwina, there is one thing I want you to promise me. I promise. There are difficult times ahead. I want to make a pact with you to keep what is between you and me free from any matters of politics. I'll never ask the Prime Minister of India for anything. I feel what's between you and me is spiritual. Its feet shall not touch the earth. Excuse me, sir. There is a matter I wish to discuss. What are these? Letters from Lady Mountbatten to Nehru and from him to her. Shameful things. More shameful for us to read them. We don't read them, sir. It was suggested we use them. We do not descend to this level. The shame is not theirs, it is ours. Destroy them. They are carving up our country, savaging our people. Uh, I, I am sorry, sir. I am sorry. I too am sorry for the thoughts that blackened your generous mind. Well, Jinnah Sahib, a bit prudish of you. You could have changed the whole course of history with those letters. Are you trying to play Satan with me? Did I hear you say that I should use blackmail against my political opponents? It would have saved lives. 
history is made by the will and the wants of millions of people, not by some letters and blackmail. Top right hand from my personal ensign. Crest instead of the Union Jack. Slightly larger, I think, as the uh, shield takes in the idea of Great Britain. We can check with the School of Heralds. Would it be proper to have both the Union Jack and my own crest? Ah, oh, Mr. Jinnah. Good of you to come. Why, sorry. Let me get straight to the point. They've invited me to be first Governor General of India. There's no doubt that you deserve the honor. And, Mr. Jinnah, what then is Pakistan's position? Lord Mountbatten, I can't say I didn't anticipate that question. It's quite clear to me that one man cannot possibly be the head of state of both nations. Surely it will be a great similar friendship between the two countries. If we were at war, Lord Mountbatten, you couldn't possibly order one side to attack and the other to defend. I see. Whose name do you think the Crown will approve, then? The Muslim League has asked me to submit my own. Do you realize, Mr. Jenner, this will cost you dear? A few crores of rupees, perhaps, from the Exchequer, or a division of the spoils. No, Mr. Jenner. It will cost you the future of Pakistan. Everything. You won't have a wooden table or chair in an office in your Pakistan. Or the money to buy an olive green army water bottle. something behind me of great value when I was forced to leave my city. Oh, Jinnah Saab, the sacrifice of a large house, what is it compared to the death of millions for your Pakistan? I was not referring to my house. I was referring to my daughter. Sorry you're not coming with us to Pakistan, but I understand. I will visit you, Papa. But my home is now in Bombay, with my husband and my child. Bibi Sarah, Jinnah Sahib has come back. Bring some tea. The refugees are pouring into Pakistan. There are stories of massacres. Well, we'll send our army in to help them. You haven't any army. They've given Ferozpur to India. It's final. But that is Muslim territory. And our major arsenal. It's Mountbatten, with Nero whispering in his wife's ear. I'm glad you could spare me these moments before you go, Miss Jenner. I will see you in Karachi, won't I? You must be my guest, Your Excellency. Oh, do call me Edwina. Edwina, I invite you formally on behalf of the government and informally to sneak in whenever you wish. But your heart is really in Hindustan, isn't it? Why do you say that? Because I think we should start by being honest with each other. 
That's very welcome. So, what do you mean by India, Hindustan being nearer my heart? Your friends. Your particular friendship with... His name is Jawaharlal Nehru. Yes, Nehru. It goes very far, doesn't it? Your friendship with him. And he is a friend of your husband. People have been talking, but people do talk. Do you know what they say about you? Me? Oh, there's nothing to talk about. On the contrary. They say that you and your brother are obsessive. That you're obsessed with this Pakistan. Yes. And that is the ideal that holds us together. Could you accept as a friend someone who didn't share that ideal, who didn't believe in Pakistan? No. I thought you might say that. But I want you to know, Fatima, that if there can be a one-sided friendship, I consider myself your friend. Liakat, I am appointing you first Prime Minister. I will announce it in the Assembly tomorrow. As for remuneration, my salary as Governor General will be one rupee a month. We must be the first to set an example. <coughs> <coughs> Are you feeling all right, sir? state of Pakistan happy and prosperous. We must concentrate wholly and solely on the well-being of the people. You are free. Free to go to your mosques, free to go to your temples, or to any other place of worship in the state of Pakistan. My guiding principle will be justice and fair play without any prejudice or ill will, without any partiality or favoritism. We must root out the poison of corruption and nepotism. Our inspiration will be the golden principles of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. And I know that with your support and cooperation, I can look forward to the day when Pakistan becomes one of the greatest nations of the world.
Munir Sahib, what would have happened if you had not created Pakistan? I don't know. I had my fears. Look what happened to the Jews in Germany. And to minorities all over the world. India, please. Tensions had reached a high point around Babri Mashid, the mosque in the northern Indian city of Ayodhya. Spurred on by powerful Hindu politicians, a mob mentality would take over. A few would become scores, then hundreds and thousands. Tired of their leaders temporizing, fired by religious zeal, they attacked. At the end of the assault, only rubble would be left. Of the Is mosque. this the end result of Hindu fanaticism? These are the people I outlawed when I was Prime Minister of India. I dislike them as much as you. Fortunately, they still remain a minority. You realize, of course, that these are the people who killed me. And you know why, Kaidi Azam? They accuse me of giving way to Pakistan. I always thought that one day, British Raj would become Ram Raj. Some of them have come thousands of miles. I don't know what we could do to help them. How do you do, Lady Mountbatten? How do you do? I am the social worker in charge of this camp. Mahatma, the conditions here are appalling. There are no tents. The officials are not at all cooperative. She's saying that she's lost her son and that her husband has died. And is this what they left their homeland for? Madam, you gave me an award at Ahmedabad University. Lady Mountbatten was there? Yes, I remember you clearly. My sister, my little sister, she's gone. There are hundreds like her sister on both sides, kidnapped, raped, and kept as slaves, too ashamed to identify themselves or to run away. And their families wouldn't accept them back if they'd been raped? Would you accept your daughter under the same circumstances? Of course. Oh, why don't you sit down? I'll, I'll just get you some tea. But what can we do? I'll do what I can here. Meanwhile, on the other side, use your influence with Nero. Get him to send troops to stop the slaughter and kidnapping. But Fatima, he's no longer just a friend. He's Prime Minister of India. And for all sorts of reasons, I, I can't. I shouldn't. Patton has promised us complete army support. And yet, all British officers are confined to barracks. Sir, the Maharaja of Kashmir has signed the state over to India. That's impossible. Kashmir is a Muslim state. Kashmir is the jugular vein of Pakistan. So we have reports that the Indian army is already in Kashmir and they are being personally directed by Mountbatten. Sir, Lord Mountbatten has deceived us and he still pretends to be our friend. He is due here tomorrow on a state visit and I'll snub him. We must learn to rise above these differences, Liakat. He is our guest. So, Janata, your story is that most of the blame lies with the Mountbattens. Only as much as they are guilty of. Of course you don't know what happened to Mountbatten. No. For a while, it was rumored that he was a Soviet spy. In the end, he became a symbolic target for the Irish Republican Army. 
May I open for the prosecution? Your case, Janassa. Lord Mountbatten stands accused of being, from the first, an enemy of Pakistan. Guilty or not guilty? I created the wretched country. I submit five pieces of evidence. One, Lord Mountbatten advanced the date of partition by eight months, hoping that the new country would be like a regiment of soldiers parachuted into enemy territory without maps. Secondly, Lord Mountbatten interfered in the division of land between India and Pakistan giving the whole military arsenal at Ferozpur to India after it had been allocated to Pakistan. I now call Sir Cyril Radcliffe, who drew up the boundary and was then forced to change it. Sir Cyril, did the Radcliffe Commission award Ferozpur to Pakistan? Yes, it did, at first. Why? Because it was a Muslim majority district. Mr. Cyril, did Lord Mountbatten issue any orders to you? Oh, yes, he gave me a verbal order. You see, the border near Ferozpur became a curve, and I was instructed to make it a straight line. Thus transferring hundreds of thousands of people from one country to another, and leaving Pakistan without one major army arsenal. That is correct. Thank you, Cecil. And lastly, this mess over Kashmir. My lord, there was no mess over Kashmir. Even I know that there have been three wars fought over Kashmir since you left it the way you did. The mess was not of my making. Mr. Jinnah hates to lose. He signed a document allowing the Maharaja of Kashmir to choose either India or Pakistan. He chose India. Now he cries foul. My lord, I did sign. And the Maharaja of Kashmir, being a Hindu, with a population 80% Muslim, should have signed to Pakistan. My lord, I am guilty. Guilty of trusting Lord Mountbatten and the British Army officers who came to command my army at my request. My lord, I call General Gracie. General Gracie, you were the army commander in Pakistan. Yes. Did you receive intelligence that Indian regiments under Lord Mountbatten's command had been airlifted into Kashmir? Yes. Were you ordered by the government of Pakistan as its army commander to resist that invasion? Yes, I was. And did you resist it? No, I... I... Perhaps you'll be good enough to explain to the court. I am a British officer. The Indian side was led by British officers. I wasn't going into a war with other officers commissioned by the King. I refused. But General Gracie, that is mutiny. Well, mutiny is a rather large word for a country like Pakistan to use. Thank you, General Gracie. That will be all. And now, a question to Lord Mountbatten himself. Why did you not stop the slaughter? Why did you not send in your troops? As I've said to you before, Mr. Jenner, British troops could not get involved in your squabbles. Britain had to withdraw with honor. After 200 years of looting, exploitation, and colonial theft, I suppose there is honor among thieves. My lord, I rest my case. Jinnah, sir, one last question. 
Mind you, I ask all of them this. If you had your time again, would you do the same thing? Yes. But I would want others to behave differently. And if you were to ask one person forgiveness, just one, who would you choose? The time is past. Perhaps it still can be arranged. She's, she's distracted. She la lost her mother. It has been very hard. Papa John, maybe the old man has seen Amma. Do you know who he is? This is the Kai the Awesome. I'm sorry, sir. We beg your forgiveness for her not recognizing you. But she's, she's only a child. It is I who should ask you of, of forgiveness for any part I have had in what has happened to you. No, no, sir, no. I, I, I bless you with all my heart. Allah blesses you. Pakistan, Zindabad. Pakistan, Zindabad. Pakistan,
neighborhood to temporary accommodation in army barracks. Yes, thank you. My apologies again. Arresting Miss Jinnah? You damn fool. Punjab and the Bihar Muslim League is reporting countless incidents of arson and murder against Muslim communities. And the police here just turned their backs. All over the country, Hindu officers have taken charge of the police forces. <coughs> Are you all right? Yes, I think the fever's going. That poor girl. She gave up her life for you. Fatima, my little sister. She was everything to me. She should have been married and found happiness with a husband and children in some decent family. She was my companion, my friend, and my guide. And she believed in Pakistan. Were you ever jealous of Nehruji? His good looks, his wit, his charm, his English manners? He was my political opponent. I respected him, though I never really trusted him. And Gandhiji? Another worthy opponent. But he would never lie. Though as a politician, he would not always tell the truth. Mother in the judgment of Solomon. Give the child to the other woman, but don't cut it in two. Together we must make one last effort to keep this great nation as one, Muslims and Hindus in one free country. Gandhiji, I'm willing to try. Years ago, Viceroy, Mr. Jinnah was the greatest advocate of Hindu-Muslim unity. Was he indeed? And then what changed him? Blind ambition. No, no. The feeling that Muslims would have no voice, perhaps. Ganesh, if you were in my position, what would you say to Jinnah? I would say, Mr. Jinnah, India must stay united. You be its first prime minister and choose your cabinet. And tell him that Congress agrees they suggested it. My dear, you've stopped here, so we may decide where to send you. With all due respect, sir, may I know how you arrive at these decisions? Ah. Here. We have everything here. We've been expecting you. Oh. Oh, no. They have transferred every detail of your life into these wretched computers. No one here knows how to use them. And the manuals are written in God knows what language.
Your file's gone. As it is, we're overworked. We've had lots of trouble with your century. World wars, revolutions, communism, capitalism, fascism, thisism and thatism. Lenin, Stalin, Hitler, Mao Zedong, Mr. Harry Truman and his nuclear bomb. Yes, we've had a very busy time here. And where did you send them? I can't even remember. The problem you fellows pose is desperate. You create Pakistan, and millions die in the division of what was one country into two pieces. There was no other way, none. Maybe, maybe. Please follow me, Mr. Jinn. I did everything I could to stop the slaughter. I fought for Pakistan so that a hundred million people could live in safety and dignity. I've got an hour and a half to prepare your case. What are the charges? They accuse you of being ambitious, arrogant, humorless, stubborn, a man without charm, a bully. They say you used people. I had no ambition, except for the safety of the Muslims of India. I had no stubbornness or arrogance, except that which was required of me to face my enemies. And I died a million deaths myself for all those who suffered through partition. Look, Jinn, sir. Just the facts. Facts? What facts? You've lost the books. You can't understand the machines. I see what you mean. Well, there's of course the eternal shortcut. At Harrow, we got into the habit of calling everyone Sir. I called my father Sir. I called my mother Sir. Everyone. It's a great British tradition. When in doubt, call them Sir. I suggested to Dicky. He only calls you Panditchi to annoy Jinnah. It's difficult, isn't it? And what do we call Gandhi? Mahatma, Bapu, Gandhiji, Mr. Gandhi. <laughs> he has more names than a character in a Russian novel. And perhaps it's best to behave like a good Indian wife. They don't call their husbands anything. Just nudge them. And what do you think of Western civilization, Mr. Nehru? Oh, I think it would be an excellent idea. <laughs> That's private. You're not happy, are you, Jawahar? You want the British, us, to go, but you don't want the bond to be broken. What the British have left us will last a long time. And people like you. I'm proud of it. Did Mr. Jinnah go to Oxford or Cambridge? No, he didn't. Uh, but he was called to the bar in London. And I'm told he even did a stint as Romeo on a London stage. <laughs> it was not the lark, but the... <laughs> Babu, what are you saying? Our party would never agree. Chabalal, you mean you would never agree? For the unity of India? Oh, yes, but <laughs> making Jinnah from a minority Muslim party prime minister? We would ensure, of course, that you would be Deputy Prime Minister. But our party... But if Gandhiji and you and Sardar Patel declare in favour, who is to say no? Except, of course, Jinnah. You think he'll agree? Why would he not? All right, Bapuji. What would he say if I told him that Gandhi had made the offer? <laughs> he, he would say, wily old Gandhi. <laughs>
Dinner. Lady Mountbatten. Tomorrow. You can't offer it to Jilla. The country won't accept it. We've never even put him in jail. I could start now. Nero's been in for years defying the British. Jilla, my dear, does it more subtly. I have no idea Gandhiji was so cynical. It'll never work. What you mean is, what will our Jawaharlal do? He has to be Prime Minister, doesn't he? Yes. I know. He's the great rising star in our firmament, the man of destiny. But will it make sense to give it to Jenna? Gandhiji didn't mean it. Oh, yes, he does. And it's a great plan. Give Jinna the biggest responsibility in an undivided nation. What can he do? He has to appoint a majority congress to a cabinet. I've seen it before. Make the biggest bound of the head prefect. The country will never forgive you. You mean Jawa will never forgive you? Or you. And you couldn't live with that. Dickie, it isn't only me. You're in love with power. And Jawahar is the embodiment of it. So, what will you do? I don't know. But I'm tempted. If these Indian politicians carry on like this, I'll foist Jinnah on them. It's what they deserve. Sour, spoilt, barracrum lawyer. Gurdip Singh? Not very dignified. Of course I was in love with India. I saved it from the Japs. Edwina will tell you we long to come back. You can imagine how I felt. The king called me and said, go to India, give it all away. Can you give away what never really belonged to you? You're right. We don't own it. We hold it in trust. My predecessor, Wavell, told me a funny story. When he first landed in India, the crowds greeted him with, Pakistan, Zindabad, Pakistan, Zindabad. He knew even less Urdu than I do. So he turned his aide, he said, what are they saying? Well, but quick as a flash, the aide translates. Oh, they're saying, Pakistan's in the bag. You see, Zindabad, in the bag. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> With all the tension in the country, I don't think we have a great deal to laugh about. Perhaps not. These are by any measure difficult times, with difficult decisions ahead. May I take this informal occasion to make a very serious proposal? Dickie... Nightingale. Oh, <laughs> oh forgot the rest. Oh, Joe, you're lying. He never played Shakespeare. No, it's true. It's funny, he seemed so proper when we first met him in Delhi. His propriety doesn't bother us. His stubbornness, vain gloriousness. Wait till the discussions begin. Dickie's in for a surprise. I know he thinks he's the great persuader. Jinnah you know, is the great unpersuadable. The great unpersuadable? Divide the country in two. Muslims on one side, Hindus on the other. Mr. Jinnah, that is madness. Lord Mountbatten, it would be equally insane to leave a Muslim minority at the mercy of a Hindu majority, many of whom hate us. Now, if the English Parliament... The Prime Minister has given me full powers. I decide. That's why I'm here, as representative of the King Emperor. Whom we respect. And I am here as a representative of a Muslim nation whom you must learn to respect. What did Lord Mountbatten think of the Pakistan demand? I suggest you ask him. I do not speak for the King Emperor. Jalal Sahab, we were told that you are humorless. Oh, really? 
It's that fellow again. He's a member of the Congress party. And because I don't laugh at his jokes, he goes around spreading this rumor. <laughs> you call yourself Muslim? And you parade your respected sister in front of crowds shamelessly? Islam stands for equality for men and women, Maulana Saf. And the women in the family of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, were active in public life. Oh no, they followed me here, bloody fools. Your ladyship, Mr. Nehru, sir. His Excellency has asked Horrid. me to... I said I didn't need... His Excellency's orders, my lady. So, Dickie knows where you are. No, Jawahar. Dickie knows where we are. Goodbye, Mr. Nehru. Lady Mountbatten. How many were hurt? Eight people badly burned. We had a feast prepared for Eid Mimsa. The Hindus rushed in with stones and sticks, shouting, Kill the cow murderers! The residents of this Basti will move out of this area! My orders are from local magistrate. These people need your protection. And who are you? They have sent Hindu policemen. These are illegal squatters. We have lived here 20 years. And crouched on the land? You politician, better get out. Sir, do you know who... It doesn't matter who I am. These people are not moving until you escort them to a proper relief camp. Arrest these people. My apologies again, Miss Jena. I assure you, we have evacuated the... It's out of petrol. It was spluttering. No, no, no. I'm sure it's engine failure. Let's use the car. No, absolutely not. You can't move him. Colonel Knowles, go and fetch some petrol. Get another ambulance.
Oh, just put those things over there and clear off. Look, I'm quite happy with pen and paper. I do not want... Oh, Jina Sahib. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Maaf ki jega. I thought uh, you were one of these wretched computer wallers. They keep sending these damn machines in from the future. Excuse me. Yes? No, 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 no. No appeal. Tell him to go to hell. You do know where you are. I have a very 